So today we're going to talk about making the move from a Bentley platform to an Autodesk platform and and some of the the, the pitfalls and some of the the roadmaps for success through this. A <clears throat> um, little bit about me. I did attend Ohio State University. Uh, I do cross out the the because I'm not big on the copyright that they tried to do for the, that three letter word. But I'm a licensed surveyor here in Ohio. I was in private practice and ownership in the civil engineering and surveying world for over 30 years. Uh, I've spent the last 14 years in the reseller world. Uh, started with a company called Advanced Solutions, and we merged with Imagina Technologies about three years ago to become the largest reseller in North America. Just a couple of quick slides on on Imagine it and, and ran uh, worldwide, which we are. We do have um, 35,000 satisfied customers. We are the largest service partner. We are an Autodesk Platinum VAR. And uh, one of our, our strong points is we do have a dedicated technical support team. That team is of 16 individuals, and it's a, a, a direct support line for our clients. Um, we also have a customer advocacy team. Um, they handle uh, problems, concerns, issues that our clients have. So they're, they're really uh, developed for client satisfaction on that. We also have 32 training centers scattered throughout the U.S. and Canada. Um, our focus is on consulting and, and solving your problems, whether it's it's reducing your cost, improving your quality of your product and your construction documents, the ability to inc uh, increase profitability. We want to make sure that that that's there. We also want to make sure that innovation is part of your your workflow and your vision. And so that's the purpose of these these webinars is to help um, increase your innovation and have you take advantage of the software that you use. So we are a complete consulting firm. We do training and support. And we also have a, a productivity now, which is our e-learning and support platform that we have developed and is utilized within the BIM and CAD environments. So what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to focus on how do I migrate to the Autodesk platform? What does it take to go from a Bentley workflow to an Autodesk workflow? And a couple of the key points that I like to make in this presentation is one, the process for moving. So the creation of the drawing formats, then the migration of legacy data. And so how do we start a translation? We're gonna look at that. What's the process of that translation? And then we're gonna look at some roadmaps to success and some projects that we currently have completed and done. So what is migration to Autodesk? It's a comprehensive framework service that we've developed through our experience in working in both platforms from our application engineers. And, and what we've learned through the years as we've migrated not only internally from version to version in both Bentley and Autodesk products in our experience from private practice and the the um, ability to work between the two and so that experience has helped us form this framework it really is an implementation so it's very easy to say okay we can migrate a, a dgn to a dwg but it's really how do we make this implementation work and move forward with a brand new workflow and so we have to look at the migration of legacy standards what, what do I mean by that? I mean, that's your brand. And so whatever brand your organization has when in the Bentley world and title blocks and sheet layouts and things of that nature, we have to take that, we have to move it into the Autodesk world. And so we want to carry that brand forward because most organizations have spent years or decades creating that brand and that look of the construction documents. So we want to make sure that we keep those standards and move those forward. Specific workflows. So 
how did it work in the Bentley world and how does it work in the Autodesk world? And so we wanna make sure that those workflows are understood for that. Is there any automation that we can create? We have a software development group here at Imagine It. And so if that automation isn't available in the native software, can we create that automation? Can we create custom tools and CUIs in the Autodesk world that mimic and do what was happening within customization of the Bentley world? Data management is always a concern. What's gonna happen with those translated files? Where are they gonna reside? Is it as straightforward as a project structure folder or is it in a data management program such as Autodesk Vault and, and how it's gonna interact with that and how attributes are handled? Or is it a third party data management? Are, are we talking about things like wind chill or project wise? And you know what does your organization do? So all of that's taken into consideration. And then, and then finally, the migration of legacy data. In, in organizations that have been in business for a long time, you know, that could be 10 years worth of DGNs that need to be moved over to DWGs, or it could be decades of that. So what's the volume of active drawings? And what's the volume of legacy drawings that have to be migrated so they can be used on the new platform? So for us, we have over 100 years of assisting clients with the migration process in, in the team. Um, each engagement is unique. And, and simply put, it's because everybody's CAD standards are a little different. And, and so we have to understand those CAD standards. Um, we've created a reproducible best practices on how we go from the translation point of view, how we go from the migration and the workflow um, practices. <clears throat> in the last year or so, we've really seen an increase in inquiries and RFPs to go from the Bentley to the Autodesk world. And so we've really created a formal structured service that we offer to our clientele and for the process of taking that microstation to the AutoCAD world. Really is a, a multi-phased process. And, and so I've broken this down into four distinct phases. The first phase is discovery. And in discovery, um, what we want to do is we want to understand how an organization works, how they draw, how they draft. We do this through a process of interviews. We do this through a process of examination of CAD standards and document management systems. And, and we go through in a very detailed and organized fashion, collect that information, and then create a report that documents everything. Sometimes it it's, comes from very well documented CAD standards. A lot of time it's, it's what I like to call tribal knowledge where it just kind of has existed and, and grown through the years amongst the end users. And so we have to collect that knowledge and actually organize it to make a translation worthwhile. So that's the discovery phase. The next phase is how is that migration going to happen in the environment and do that? So we talk about the translation. Is the translation going to be internal within an organization's environment or is it something that we have to remove from that environment, externally translate, and then send it back into the environment for use? And so that's important. It doesn't sound like, like much, but when you start talking about 50, 60, 70,000 DGNs to DWGs or, you know, 100,000, then that becomes a logistic situation where we want to make sure that we're as efficient as possible and not disrupting an organization. The development of the Autodesk-based environment. So are we working in, in AutoCAD? Uh, which is very typical for manufacturing organizations. Are we working in civil 3D, and which is 
civil and surveying companies that we migrate to the platform. So we have to understand the environment that they're working at. And then also the data management. So where is it going to reside? Again, is it a, is it a folder structure? Is it in a, in a program such as Vault or Windchill or ProjectWise and how it's going to interact with, with that data management system? There's an education component to this. And, and in some aspects, it's from the picks and clicks. So going from a microstation environment into an AutoCAD environment, we want to make sure that everybody understands the differences in the drafting perspective. So from a drafts, drafting perspective, you know, double clicks versus single clicks, command names, things of that nature. So there is an educational component for this. If there's any custom workflows, then we have to develop and document those workflows. And again, the educational component of training the organization and users to understand the new workflows, the deviation from how they were thinking and how they did things on the, the previous platform for that. And then if data management, which in a lot of times is new and being introduced to them, then we have to train them on that system uh, of data management. So from a vault perspective, there'll be training for the administrative people as well as the end users. And then post-implementation support, project mentoring. A lot of times we'll have uh, mentors assigned to organizations so that they can work with people on the new platform and help them over the speed bumps as they're going through and learning technical support from our technical support group, um, which will allow what's happening to my software, why is it acting, you know, a little buggy, those kind of things, as well as supporting them in their actual um, design aspects um, on the new platform. And then e-learning, and our e-learning platform is productivity now. And so that's available that's a 24-7 learning portal that operates within the environment of the software, and you can ask it questions. It's got a searchable database, and so it's, it's a great support tool for post-implementation. A lot of times, we'll do the discovery phase first as a separate project, and we'll go through and, and collect those CAD standards, do the discovery phase, make a presentation to the client, and then from there, we will create a statement of work and move forward with the other aspects of the project. Sometimes it's also integrated into the project as a singular project. So in the discovery phase, we really want to gain and understand, the, one, the objectives, for what the client does and and how they're going to do it in the new platform. Most important is the CAD standards. The CAD standards drive the translations. And so we can make that one-to-one -one translation from MicroStation to AutoCAD. Um, we want to document everything. So we're starting on that clean slate so that we know exactly what's happening. Take those seed files, understand those seed files, understand how they're gonna to relate to the new template files in the AutoCAD environment or the Civil 3D environment, and make sure that we have that one-to-one -one translation. Make any refinements that are needed. Is there any upload, uh, any automation needed? Do we need to automate within the environment of AutoCAD to simulate what was going on in their microstation environment? And so we do that a lot with tools and macros for that. Uh, the data management environment, as I said before, we want to document the new procedures, how they're going to check in, check out, and utilize their new document management system if they're moving to that, or are they st simply staying within their project file structure? And then we want to make sure that the education is defined. Typically, as we move somebody from the MicroStation Bentley platform into the Autodesk platform, that education consists of, you know, some type of AutoCAD training in the basics to make sure that the commands are understood and that the lines, arcs, and circles 
are, are clear and so there aren't any questions on how to operate within the AutoCAD environment. And if they're an engineering firm, you know, we would move on into a civil 3D type of training from there. So that education can be very comprehensive. So again, sometimes the discovery and the recommendations is a separate engagement for the client. So from the environment perspective, the development is going to be based upon what was happening in the Bentley world. We're going to, again, make sure that legacy data is considered and the DGNs to the the DWG translation. And so that's important because if they are using legacy data, it may differ, may differ from the age of when it was done. And we can go back as far as, you know, we see a lot of V8I in our translations that we're doing uh, from the microstation perspective. We've had some, some version sevens that we've had to deal with. And so just as it is in any software, as they start moving through the versions, things change, objects change. So we wanna make sure that we have all of that. And then what we do is we actually create a translation matrix. And this matrix controls everything as we do the, the translation and we process those DGNs. Just a couple of classes that we find that we typically go through in the education portion, AutoCAD training, um, an AutoCAD essentials uh, class is what we typically do. Can go from anywhere from one to three days, depending on the level of drafting knowledge uh, from the company or organization that we're dealing with. Uh, typically, some people start out in, in the Autodesk world, move to the Bentley world. Now they're gonna be moving back, so they have at least an, a basic understanding in that. So again, it's customized for every one of our clients. Civil 3D fundamentals, Civil 3D survey, those two are typical in the, the engineering firms that we've migrated from Bentley to Autodesk and need to train them in that as well as AutoCAD if necessary. And then if we move into the data management world, BIM 360 Vault, we need to have training exercises for that. Our training is typically a, a live instructor, can either be done on site, can be done remotely. Um, thanks to the pandemic, uh, last two years, everything has been done remotely, but it's always a live instructor and it's a lecture exercise format so that we can tailor those lectures to the organization's needs and then go through picks and clicks to drive home the points. And then we, at the end, we have to educate the organization on how the data was converted because there's always gonna be straggler files around and that. And so, you know, our deliverables are the translation tables and that's so that they can be translated at any time after the fact. So if they find a DGN and they wanna make it into the new DWG standards, they understand how to translate it, how to use the translation table and that they can move forward with that. So how do we start a translation? As I said, discovery, that's the key. Document the CAD standards for that. And then this is a typical portion of a table of contents from our discovery. And so first off, down after 3.0, you can see the current CAD software deployment, how the drawing elements and in the, in the, in the DGNs are, are compiled and how they're used, any CAD standards that we can document, and the CAD processes and workflows. Those four lines are the critical elements in what we want to ascertain in the discovery phase. From that, then we can start thinking about how we're going to translate the data, how we're going to have tags and the attributes and how they're going to be managed in the data management system. And all of that kind of flows from 
the learning and the documentation of the basic CAD standards uh, for that. And then we do recommendations on exactly the workflow that we're going to utilize for the translations and, and what we're going to be able to accomplish. And there are some things that we can accomplish in the translations depending on the age of, of the DGNs for that. So the discovery is a document as shown on the right hand side of the screen is typical uh, cover sheet for what we produce and that uh, once we have all this information documented we do do a presentation to the organizational executive staff and and whatever team members um, that are necessary uh, and we will do that as a web-based uh, presentation uh, through a PowerPoint presentation summarizing what we found before turning the document itself over to the client. So the discovery session leads to the actual creation of a translation table. So this is the next phase. So we want to create the translation tables. The translation tables are what controls everything that happens in the translation process. So we start with a microstation seed file. And those seed files are the equivalent of, a, of an AutoCAD template file, so the DWT file. And so we want to look at those seed files. We want to open them up in, in, in microstation. We want to understand what they do. We want to understand how the levels are used and how we're going to move that those objects into the new environment and as we do that we really get that understanding of of the age of the dgns that we look that we're going to be translating and so what starts out in a newer version may be different from an older version we understand the multiple model spaces within a dgn from that and so that's what we're really starting to to look at when we start with that seed file. Then we ask for typical uh, DGNs that represent the projects. So we'll get multiple projects. Most organizations have some kind of folder structure or data management structure. And so that's how the translation schedule will be developed, will be based upon that structure and pulling files out of production, translating and moving them back in into the file folder or the data management system. But from that typical DGN, we have the ability to look at those, open those up, and export out a C CSV file. And that's going to where we start in the creation of the translation tables. So, some considerations that we have levels to layers, cells to blocks, line types to the AutoCAD.LINs, microstation colors to AutoCAD colors, and then drafting habits of legacy data. So the first couple are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Line types tend to be um, fairly straightforward unless they're customized in the microstation environment, then we might have to build some custom AutoCAD line types to, to handle those from that. Color seems straightforward, but not always. Um, some of the, the drafting habits in, in MicroStation and, and when I used MicroStation is I started when there was 63 levels. And so from a color perspective in my drafting habits, I might have multiple things on the same level. And, and so we have to take that into consideration. Are there multiple lines on the same level that now have multiple line types and multiple colors? So we want to understand all of that from that and then just in general how were these drawn how were these created um, that that seems again like a simple concept but when you're trying to figure out drawings in any environment that were created by people that are no longer within the organization um, through time then you have to kind of second guess some things and so you want to make sure that as you are developing your translation tables that all of these things kind of flow into that table and they're considered. So once we have some sample DGNs, we actually export out a file and that file gives us the level names and if there's descriptions attached to that, what colors were there, 
what line weights were there. And so this really is our starting point. And, and this is one of the ways that we really document the CAD environment. And so what we have found is in organizations that one discipline may have one set of CAD standards that's undocumented. Another discipline may have a different set, maybe as simple as just what goes on a level and the, and the line types and the colors. But it may be that this valve symbol means X in one discipline and Y in another discipline. And so we wanna make sure that we understand that so that we can build multiple translation tables that take into account those variations between disciplines, which in turn is between the folder structure or the data management structure, so that when we translate those, we translate them by disciplines as opposed to a singular master. And in a perfect world, one master translation table would be great and we could use it for everything. And to date, that hasn't really happened in any of the projects that we've done. So this is just an example of, of what we can pull out of old DGNs. Next, we create the mapping table. And the mapping table is an Excel spreadsheet. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see levels, colors, weights, and so forth. So within this Excel spreadsheet, we actually document what it is and what it's going to. So you can see in the light blue, those are the level names. You can see in the in the, the first middle column of green, that's what's gonna be translated into the AutoCAD environment and the layer name. And so in this particular case, they were making whole scale changes. So rather than a one-to-one -one translation, we were actually taking things like the text and putting them on an annotation layer. Uh, for that. And so we do have the ability to consolidate some things and, and make things a little clearer in the AutoCAD environment. And then the descriptions. We typically embellish the descriptions. A lot of times we find in, in older legacy uh, DGNs, as well as AutoCAD DWGs, that the descriptions were not used. And so they're either blank fields or maybe they're very vague fields. So we wanna make sure in that translation that those fields are cleaned up and that we can make them as clear and concise as possible. And so this Excel spreadsheet has a tab for everything that we're gonna control in the translation. And through that, we will use this to control the translation itself. So the translation process is an iterative process, and we've created this checklist for not only doing QAQC on the final drawings, but also we use it for, as we translate, we wanna do a drawing comparison, the DGN to the translated DWG. We wanna check all the variations that we have in there, you know, looking side by side, doing inspections and clicking on items and objects to make sure we want to make sure that you know the obvious things did the colors translate did we get the right color chart within the AutoCAD environment so that the colors match do the line types match very often we'll see that line types are slightly off um, in the translation process it does go from a to an LT scale and in, in the Autodesk environment of, of one. And so a lot of times um, there'll be a few line types that that LT scale has to be changed manually. And there's no way that we've, we've created a process that, to date that will go through and change just certain lines and the LT scales to something that makes them look right. But we try to get all of that done in a translation process as much as possible. And again, that may be that we have to create a a, a line itself uh, for that. Side-by-side -side comparison. So in our, in our QAQC, 
part of that form is we take a screen capture of the DGN, we take a screen capture of the DWG, we place that at the bottom of the form so that we have documentation of what what was done in the translation. So in the beginning, we might see colors that are different and we wanna catch those. And as we go through the process, we are refining that translation so that we can get that um, going for that. So full speed ahead in the translation. What's gonna take place? So the first thing we're gonna do once we have that translation table is we now have the ability to batch convert uh, DGNs to DWGs. And when we do that, those DGNs come out of um, production. So they're removed from the environment, they are translated, and then they're released back into the environment so that the DWGs now will become the active drawings. And so there's a line in the sand that's drawn uh, through the schedule of, of when those DGNs are no longer the viable ones for editing and that they are moving to that particular DWG as the production drawings. Tags do become attributes. It's one of the things that we wanna make sure happens uh, from that. And that those attributes are processed into uh, uh, those tags are processed into the attributes in the file title blocks are a great example um, typically what we do is we go through and we we create the border sheets for those if those are referenced in at the microstation level and so those borders are already in the proper folder structure and so as we translate those those dgns into dwgs they will pull the new borders in uh, for that and then if it's a tag in microstation it will become an attribute in that title block for the AutoCAD environment or that may be managed by the data management system itself. Xrefs will pull through the translation and so if there is an Xref drawing and it is not translated then the translator will translate that XREF first, then translate the, the, the microstation DGN and pull them both through so that you now have two DWGs for that. One of the great things is the DWG names will be identical to the DGNs, and that includes the date. So if that DGN was created in 1977, the DWG will have the same name as the DGN with the 1977 date. So it's a great one-to-one -one correspondence. If a DWG is already in the folder, then it will be skipped. So it will not retranslate a DGN if there's a DWG in that same folder of the same name when we do our translations. So some speed bumps that, that can happen. Um, we typically encounter multiple model spaces in the microstation environment. There can be as many as you know 12 or 15 um, that we might encounter within there. So we always wanna be wary of that. If that does happen, and there is a, a, a drawing with multiple model spaces, so typical practice was create a model space for a quarter inch scale, half inch scale, you know, 20 scale, 40 scale, so forth, then those are going to be translated and they're gonna become independent drawings upon that translation. It'll be the same name, the same date, and it'll be drawing one, drawing two, so forth. Now, in general, most of those DWGs that, that are outputted from that are just empty placeholder scales. And so they can be eliminated from the process. But sometimes there are multiple model spaces with different entities in there. And so they will have objects within that drawing. So then in our QAQC process, as we see that, we go back and investigate those multiple drawings from the multiple model spaces and weed out anything that's empty from that. 
Microstation nesting, some common problems that we see. I call them deceased servers. So as we go back through legacy drawings and we look at those, there may be a reference to a server that no longer exists. Um, so those paths have to be fixed. And a lot of times we do have the ability to repath them to a new server and that takes care of the problem and that broken reference. Or a lot of times we have to just eliminate that uh, from that. And if they decide to keep that one-to-one -one translation with the broken reference, then that'll be the decision that'll be made jointly with the organization. Um, see a lot of non-existent local drives. So if I was referencing something to my C drive and then you know moved on and was checked back into the system, it's no longer on Kevin's C drive for the reference. That doesn't exist in the pathing for the drawing. So we have to fix those and remove those references. So broken references is an issue a lot of times. Um, but if it's a, a fairly straightforward DGN with with singular model space, then the translation is one-to-one -one and works very cleanly. Um, and again, different disciplines or, or different disciplines having different standards want to make sure that, you know, we catch all of those. And so we document those up front so that we can look at those items as we translate uh, through the process of QA, QC. So the colors, the symbols, the line types, um, those are the things that we want to pick up in the QA, QC uh, from that. And that's through visual inspection. And, and not only looking at them, but when I say visual inspection, I mean picking on objects and making sure that we've done those things correctly. And we have to go back and adjust our translation table sometimes. As I said, it's an iterative process. <clears throat> so roadmap to success. So from the civil engineering surveying architectural firm to a, a large manufacturing facility, you know, how can we say it's kind of the same process? And, and really, it's the commonality of drafting and production. Uh, drafting is drafting in a sense, microstation to AutoCAD is the format. And so that commonality allows a, allowed us to produce this, this reproducible service of, of moving from Bentley to the Autodesk world. Let's talk about civil engineering and surveying and architectural firms. Um, so from their perspective, as we said, we always define the current and future CAD standards, define the desired design functionality. So from a civil engineering perspective, let's just assume that they were designing pipes in the Bentley world, utilizing power civil. Well, pipes come from a database. In, in the Bentley world. And so now we're moving over into the civil 3D world. We, we need them to understand that it's no longer a database, that we're moving to catalogs and pulling them from a parts list. So there's fundamental differences on how they worked in the env Bentley environment to how they're gonna work within the Autodesk environment are critical in that education portion to understand. They're also critical in the new standards and once we have the new standards and the new DWT, then we know how we're going to create that translation path from the Bentley world into the AutoCAD world. Now, in the civil and, and surveying and architectural firms, legacy drawings are not as as great as they are within the manufacturing firm. And, and so legacy drawings typically will stay. We look at things that are in phases that they will need, translate those, translate anything new that they're working on and, and have a, the date that they start working within the Autodesk environment. And, and that's a big difference between manufacturing type projects for migration and our typical engineering firm from that. And then we wanna make sure current and, and future production plans, that's branding. We want to make sure that we're carrying forward the brand that was created by that organization and so that the construction documents show that. 
So we're going to create a drawing template within the environment. So this is the typical process that we do for a civil engineering, surveying, or architectural firm. Want to train them in the new software that includes drafting from an AutoCAD perspective. Going to help them implement the new Autodesk software. And so now that they understand how to draft in, in AutoCAD, understand how to design in in civil or one of the AutoCAD specialties, that that's the way they're going to move forward uh, with that. So we're going to implement that new software. And then we're going to provide mentoring for any new projects. So we can, we can create the foundation with the template. We can migrate data from the Bentley world. We can train them within the software. And then once that flag is waved and they start working within the new environment, it's so important that we provide mentoring services for that, that we're there when they need need us to help them with the new software and the complete understanding of the new design functionality, whether it's engineering or architectural. So from a large manufacturing facility point of view, um, again, top three are the same. It's, it's always CAD standards, where they want to end up, and their current and future plans. So creation of the translation tables for them, we tend to see large amounts of legacy data that needs to be moved. You know, from a, from a plant environment, they may not need it today, but they will need it tomorrow as they do renovations of the plant from that. And so the legacy data is 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 paramount for them in what they're doing. Want to make sure we test that translation. So again, it's an iterative process. We're going to look, we're going to compare, we're going to utilize it within customized tools to make sure that it works. We're going to verify that translation through the QAQC process. So once we get to a point where we're content with the translation tables, now we're ready to go through and translate large volumes of, of legacy data. And we do that, and then we'll check a percentage of those folders randomly and, and drawings in the comparison with the checklist that I showed earlier. And then we will translate all the legacy DGNs. That's the logistics. That's a schedule. When we pull them out of production, translate them, put them back in, and then when do they go live with the new DWGs in the AutoCAD environment? And as, as we do that, we're performing that final QA, QC before they're checked back in. So a couple of current projects that we have going on. We've migrated multiple design firms from the civil engineering and surveying world uh, from that, and they've come off of off of Bentley, Inroads, Geopack, Open Roads, Power Civil. We've moved them into the the AutoCAD and the Civil 3D environment uh, from that. And and again, we do that through the process of of discovery. We do that with the creation of their new CAD standards within the Autodesk environment, the education of the software that they're going to be using the understanding and education of how workflows differ within a new environment, but accomplish the same that they were used to doing, and then making sure, as always, we carry their brand forward of their plans for that. From a plant environment, um, again, it's typically decades of microstation drawings. So we just completed one where we migrated 70,000 DGNs to AutoCAD drawings using the same uh, process. We configured Vault Pro for them to manage. Uh, prior to that, they had a homegrown system that they were using to manage their drawings and their revisions uh, for that. We also configured Vault to manage the title blocks within the AutoCAD drawings that they were utilizing. So, you know, the fields were automatically populated and easy to update. We did the same thing for another plant. We're working currently now and doing 98,000 DGNs 
to DWGs, and then conf we've got the vault completely configured, and that'll be utilized for the management of those drawings. And then a third plant from the same organization, smaller plant, 25,000 DGNs um, that we'll be working on from that environment. <clears throat> And this last one, we did a lot of customization and the creation of macro tools and 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 CUIs to utilize native AutoCAD functionality that uh, the MicroStation environment didn't have. And so we've customized the workspace to recreate their MicroStation environment for that. And then we'll be translating, you know, up to 167,000 DGNs to DWGs. Um, again, their data management is the wind chill data management environment, and that'll manage those AutoCAD drawings for that. As I said, we program macro utilities and CUIs for that. Um, so these are just some typical projects that, that we've done that we're working on in, in, in utilizing this service for the migration from Bentley to Autodesk. So now it's time for questions, and I, I do thank you for listening to this presentation.